One of the oldest stories in the Bible is that of Abraham. He was a God-fearing man who lived in the ancient land of Haran. One day, God called Abram to leave this land and all that was familiar to him. And when God calls people, it's not exactly demanding, but it's also not asking. I can't quite explain it, but I do know that it's not usually easy. It's always for the best, and it ends in great blessing. The hardest things are often the most worth doing. God promised to bless Abram and make his name great if he submitted his plans, his life, and his trust to God. The author of Hebrews writes later that, By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. He led his entire family from their familiar home in Haran and traveled to the land of Canaan, which God promised to him and his descendants. Though his faith was among the strongest in the Bible, Abram was still human and made human mistakes. He and his family moved to Egypt for a time to escape a famine in Canaan, but out of fear for his life, he told his beautiful wife, Sarai, to pretend she was his sister because he thought the Egyptians would kill him to get to her. Soon enough, Pharaoh saw Sarai, and thinking that she was Abram's sister, led her to eventually become his wife. Bad things started happening because of this. God sent diseases into Pharaoh's household, and Pharaoh went back to Abram, asking why he would deceive him in such a way. He gave Sarai back to Abram and sent them on their way. Back in Canaan, some time later, Abram's nephew Lot brought a problem to his attention. Both men were very rich and had only grown richer, and their flocks, herds, and tents continued to expand. Because they were sharing the same section of land, there started to be arguing amongst the herders of each man. Lot proposed that they separate, and Abram, seeing the wisdom in this, graciously let him take the first pick of the land. Lot looked for the most fertile land and chose that for himself, while Abram chose land in the opposite direction. While Lot chose life in the city of Sodom, Abram lived a quieter existence amongst his own family. However, he did not cut himself off from the outside world. Ellen White describes Abram during this time as being seen as a mighty prince and a wise and able chief. His neighbors admired him and saw that he was a good man. They saw that he was different, honorable, benevolent. They saw the result of a life dedicated to serving the Lord. He put God first, he obeyed God first, and God took care of the rest. Once, when four kings attacked nearby Sodom and Gomorrah, where Lot lived, and carried off him and many other people and possessions, Abram led a rescue mission and brought back all the captured people to their homes. He brought back all the stolen goods as well, and though the grateful king of Sodom offered to let him keep them, he refused to accept. He refused to owe anything to this king. Something that Abram struggled with was whether or not he would have children. God talked to him one night, outside under the billions of stars in the sky, and promised him that his offspring would match the number of stars in the sky that night. As time wore on, Abram struggled to see how this promise would be fulfilled as he and his wife grew older and older. One day, Sarai suggested a way that they could help God fulfill this promise, something which God, of course, did not need help with. But a lapse of faith led Abram to sleeping with the servant Sarai gave him. This servant's name was Hagar, and she did become pregnant and gave birth to a little boy named Ishmael. During the pregnancy and after the birth, Sarai treated Hagar badly because of envy and because Hagar had lost respect for her mistress. God, however, protected Hagar and Ishmael. Hagar spoke of him as the God who sees me. When Abram was 99 years old, more than 10 years since God had promised him a child, God renewed his covenant with Abram. At this renewal, he gave him the new name Abraham, which means father of many nations and he promised to be his God and the God of his descendants forever. He also changed Sarai's name to Sarah, which means princess. He asked Abraham to uphold a part of the covenant, 
which was to circumcise himself and all the males in his household, and to continue doing this throughout generations as a sign of the covenant between him and God. One day, three strangers approached Abraham's camp on their journey. Being the generous and hospitable person he was, he ran out to them to offer some water and rest, and he recognized them as holy, two angels and God himself. As he served them food and water, one of them revealed that one year from then, his wife would give birth to a son. He also informed Abraham that they were on their way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the evil cities they had become. On behalf of his nephew Lot, Abraham pled with God. He asked God to spare the city if there were just 50 righteous people, then 45, then 40, 30, 20, finally 10 people. And out of his loyalty to Abraham and because of Abraham's faithfulness to him, the Lord continued to agree to spare the city even if there were only 10 righteous people found. Unfortunately, the city could not show even 10 righteous people. The angels who had come with God saved Lot's family by urging them out of the city, and then they destroyed the two evil cities. Soon, Abraham moved his family to live for a time in the land of Gerar. While there, a familiar story played out. Abimelech, the king of the land, took Sarah to be his wife because, once again, Abraham had deceived people into believing she was his sister. God appeared to Abimelech in a dream to tell him the truth about Sarah and keep him from sinning, and a bewildered Abimelech returned Sarah to Abraham. Despite all Abraham's shortcomings and mistakes, God was still gracious to him and Sarah and fulfilled his promise of giving them a son. Sarah gave birth to Isaac, and Abraham circumcised him as he had promised he would to God. With this son brought the hardest test of obedience Abraham had to endure. God spoke again to Abraham and told him, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Torn and heartbroken as he was, out of his great faith in God, his trust in God's wisdom and foresight, Abraham obeyed and took Isaac with him on the day of the sacrifice. The author of Hebrews again writes, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. He knew that God would still fulfill his promises to Abraham, even though this request seemed to completely contradict it. His faith was unbroken. God's ways are not our ways. He is infinitely wiser than the wisdom of all humans combined, and he can see infinitely more than we will ever see or know. C.S. Lewis writes in his Chronicles of Narnia that Aslan, the lion representing God in these books, is not a tame lion. God is not a tame God. He cannot be placed in a box. One cannot guess what he will do next. He can never be fully understood. And sometimes, when we have grown to know and love God, to walk with him closely and experience his goodness and his character, he may ask for our blind faith, our complete obedience, our complete trust, as he works towards things that are completely out of our line of vision. And this was one of those moments for Abraham. Abraham prepared the wood for the offering, and he put Isaac on the altar, who should also be commended for his own obedience to God and to his father. And Abraham drew his knife to kill his son. But just before the final act took place, an angel stopped Abraham in his tracks and told him not to harm the boy. God provided a ram caught in a nearby thicket to take the place of Isaac on the altar. This climactic story of Abraham's life is shocking, perhaps upsetting and confusing, but beautiful as well. Abraham knew and fully trusted God's promises to him. He knew God, and he knew that God had never failed him before. He knew that God was a good God, a God of love, and even a friend to Abraham, because Abraham had walked with and talked with God for his whole life. Because of the relationship he had built with his Lord, because of his unshakable faith in God, Abraham knew that he could trust his life and the life of his son in God's hands. 
Abraham proved how strong this faith was as he obeyed God's command to sacrifice his only son, even though it wouldn't have made any sense to him at the time. The relationship between God and Abraham was a beautiful one, as we see how much each loved the other. The other beautiful part of this story is how pointedly it reflects God's sacrifice for us. Because we humans are born with a sinful nature, we are condemned to die. This is the law of the universe. However, just like the ram in Abraham's story, God provided Jesus as the perfect lamb that took our place on the altar of sacrifice. Jesus took all our sins to the grave with him when he died, so that we would have a future. Then Jesus rose again, free from all the sin, but not free from the scars of it, so that he can live forever with us, the people he loved enough to save. The story of Abraham continues, but I will let you read it for yourself if you so desire. You can find it in Genesis chapters 12 through 25. Abraham continued to live his life in a close, trusting relationship with God. He continued to obey God, and God never failed him. His story is now written out in the Bible for us as an example of the beautiful life we could experience if we pursue the same loving relationship with the same faithful God.